This is another video for section 7.1. So in this video, we're going to cover example four. And it says, find the area of the region between the graphs of f of y equal to 3 minus y squared and g of y equal to y plus 1. Okay. So this time, the functions are in terms of y which means we should be integrating with respect to dy, which also means that my rectangles should be horizontal, okay? So all that just from the functions being given. However, they don't give me the horizontal lines which I'm supposed to be bounded by, y equal to this and y equal to that. So in order for me to find them, I do have to set my two functions equal to each other. And if I move all the terms on the left to the right hand side, I will get y squared plus y minus two. And if I factor that, I get y plus two y minus one, which means y equals negative two and y equals one. Okay. Now for this one, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, so I'm going to set up a chart just to help me a little bit here. I do have the y values, negative 2 to 1. So I'm going to actually use some of the y values in between, like negative 1 and 0. And then we'll use positive 1. Okay. And I have two functions to talk about here. I have f of y, which is an x value. And I have g of y, which is also an x value. So if y is equal to negative 2, what x value do I end up with here? That would be 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. If I plug in negative 1, I'd have 3 minus 1, which is 2, then 3, and then also 2. Now, for the other function, if I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get negative 1, which makes sense because they intersect at negative 2, so this should have the same x value. When I plug in negative 1, I get 0. When I plug in 0, I get 1. And when I plug in positive 1, I get 2, which again makes sense because they should be um, intersecting, intersecting at negative 2 and 1. So let's graph this and see what that looks like. So let's see, the lowest y value I have is negative 2, and the highest y value I have is 1. And the lowest x value I have is negative 1, and then the highest is actually 3. So let's graph the top function first. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 2. When x is 2, y is negative 1. Then when x is 3, y is 0. And when x is 2, y is 1 again. So that means my function is moving like this, in this path, okay? From the first x value to the last. Now the second function, at negative 2, it's, the x value is negative 1, negative 2, 0, and negative 1, 1, and 0, and then 2, and 1. And so again, tracing them from left to right, I have this here. Now this makes sense. This should be a parabola, but a sideways parabola, because it's in terms of y. And this should still be a line, okay? So this is the region that we should be looking at. Now remember, the functions are in terms of y, which means I should be using a horizontal rectangle this time. And so the width of this horizontal rectangle is dy. So when I set up my area, I am going to have dy in my integral. Now, where does this um, rectangle span across? from the lowest y value to the highest y value. The lowest y value is down here at negative two. The highest y value is up here at positive one. Now, the 
height, or actually in this case, because of the way it's facing, could be considered length, right? The length of the rectangle should always be the greater side, the greater function minus the lower function. While on the number line, the right-hand sides are greater than the left-hand side. So in here, I should have my curved function, which is three minus y squared minus the straight function, which is y plus one. And if I do a little algebra inside there, we end up with negative y squared, negative y plus two. And then if we integrate, we get negative y cubed over three minus y squared over two plus two y, evaluated from negative two to one. Um, we get negative one third, negative one half plus two minus negative positive eight thirds, negative four over two, which is two, and then negative four. So here you get negative nine thirds, which is negative three. And then here you get 2 plus 2 plus 4 is going to be 8. So 5 minus a half, which is 4 and a half, or 9 halves. That is going to be our area of this region. Now, once you've shown me this and you've written out that, how you do the math is you could put it in a calculator, you could do it by hand, whatever is faster and easier for you. Um, just as long as I see the setup of the integral, I see you actually integrate, and then I see you with the setup to evaluate, okay? You have to show those three steps, the setup, the integration, and the evaluation, and then you can come to your conclusion. And it also helps if you draw the graph, okay? Now, I'm not going to dock you points because in the directions it will say you need to set it up, you need to simplify it, if possible, it'll say that. Um, integrate and evaluate and show the steps for each. The only thing that's not in there is the requirement to show me the graph. So if you're using the, the computer to do it, that's fine, the calculator, but you do need to have the correct setup that yields the correct answer. Having just the correct answer is not going to be sufficient for the test, okay? So make sure you understand how to set them up how to integrate them, and how to evaluate them.